Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Jessa Jeremiah, and we have a great show for you today. We are going to talk high school football a little bit later with our sports news partner. But first, it's the perfect start to a Wisconsin talk show. We're going to talk cheese. <laughs> and who better to do that? We've got Pam Schuett, Peg Schuett, excuse me, Peg, from Cheesers joining us. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. God, we're so excited to have you. I know viewers at home can't smell the good cheese, <laughs> but you can smell it here in the studio. It's delicious smelling. Cheese does have an odor, and it's, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Let's talk about cheesers a little bit. This is your one-stop shop for all of your cheese it needs. Is. So talk to us about varieties of cheeses that are available in your store. I see several right here in front of us already. We have about 120 varieties of cheese. Um, many we cut um, personally, uh, which is not common these days in a cheese store. Normally it's all prepackaged and you just grab what you want. and. Um, but we cut, so people come and ask us for quarter pound, half pound, pound, whatever, and we cut right in front of them so they know it's a fresh cut. We have very fresh cheese. We drive many, many miles to get our cheese these days, so, and fresh curds every Thursday. Oh, okay. Well, you're speaking our language now. <laughs> um, all sounds good, and you have this gorgeous gift box here also that you've brought. So I can see that there's all kinds of varieties of things that you do outside of cheese, too. So talk mm -hmm. to us about some of the other specialty foods and gifts that you do. Oh, we have many. We have um, like the spicy brown mustard right here. That's made by a chef in New Jersey. We have mustards. We have Door County Coffee, which in fact we won first place in the Coffee Break Festival oh, just recently. Awesome. Um, lots of cheese spreads and tilt this up a little bit so viewers at home can see what you're talking about because this is such a cool gift basket. Candies, sausage, um, pretzels, all kinds of different unique things, gifts, and, and just for yourself. Very good. So that's wonderful. So you can get a nice gift. These are great as we come upon the holidays here. For mm -hmm. our relatives maybe outside of Wisconsin, we can share our love for cheese with them, right? And you send these out. Mm -hmm. So where all do you send to then? All across the United States okay. and Canada. Mm -hmm. awesome. And your image is significantly uh, raised when you send a gift of cheese, especially totally Wisconsin agree. cheese. <laughs> yes. In fact, I lived outside of Wisconsin for a while, although I still have family here, and every year they would send me cheese for Christmas, mm -hmm. and I was always thrilled. I mean, easy to please. But oh, <laughs> and what easier gift. Yeah, it's just nice to have something, you know, for the holidays when you've got people in and out and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So what a great gift. And um, let's talk a little bit more about cheesers, because I've actually never been, so I'm excited to kind of learn what is it that sort of sets you apart and makes cheesers so special. Well, there's a warm feeling when you walk in Cheesers. There, there just is. I've heard that from so many customers. Um, we have eight employees, and they are just there willing to do whatever you need to make your party great or just your home. Um, cheese, whatever you need. We're, we're anxious to help you out. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what is it that made you start this business? How did you get into <laughs> this? Well, I always wanted to own my own business, but I'll let you in on a little secret. I never Please. ate cheese before I bought the cheese store. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. How funny is that? My dad had what he called cheese on his sandwiches, and I didn't want any part of that. <laughs> so when I tasted this cheese, I said, oh, this can't be cheese, it's good. <laughs> so I've, I've been making up for a lot of years it's of not eating cheese. a whole different world of cheese out there that you weren't exposed mm -hmm. to previously. That's funny. Well, let's chat with folks at home a little bit quickly about where you're located and what hours you run. Okay, sure. We're at 183 East Main Street in Stoughton, right on Highway 51, that's Main Street. Um, our hours are 9 to 5.30 Monday through Friday. 9 to 4 30 on Saturday and Sundays we're not open right now we're open seasonally 12 to 4 but we do have our cheese emergency phone number on the door cheese emergency mm -hmm. I love that that's great <laughs> what, and we have had emergencies why would somebody call for a cheese emergency what would that be well if they have company come unexpectedly or someone is from out of town and leaving in the morning and not able to get to our store on by the time we open and we're happy to run down to the store and 
and get them their cheese. I love that. That's <laughs> great. And uh, how do they order these? What's the best way? You can call. Um, you can email. Go to our website. There's many ways. We're, we're always there to help you. And each gift box is done like it's the only gift box. I love that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Peg Schuett of Cheesers in Stoughton. Well, if you weren't hungry yet, you're about to be, because after the break, we're going to talk chocolate right here on Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We've had a tasty show so far. We went from cheese, now we're going to talk chocolate with Marcus Candinas, who is Mr. Candinas of Candinas Chocolatier. How are you today? I'm good, I'm good. Good. Well, we're excited to have you. So let's talk chocolate. I was just saying before we started, I have not been yet to your two shops, but I need to go. You do. We've noticed that you haven't been there. Yeah, well, I apologize, and I will rectify the situation immediately. But um, let's talk about your shop and what makes it so unique. Well, the chocolate, of course. Um, yeah, the chocolate, it just tastes so much better, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, hey, that's why we come, right? That's why we got to go. So let's talk about this next. Now, Consumer Reports recognized you as being one of the top three chocolates in the country. Is that right? Does this mean that We'll see lots more of your stores popping up all over the place. They did say that. And um, no, you know, and I should have said this before, part of what makes our chocolate so special is that we do the things that everybody else talks about. So it's fresh, um, we use the best ingredients. So it, for us to have more stores everywhere would kind of be contrary to, contrary to that. So okay. no, we don't um, expand on expanding. Uh, so part of what makes it so unique and the taste so great is the fact that you have just a smaller business and you're able to take that time and focus on those two stores. Right. I mean, we have great capacities. We you know, have the ability to make a lot of chocolate, but um, we only sell it in our own two stores um, so that we can control the freshness and all the parameters that make chocolate taste really good. Yeah. Make sure it doesn't melt. Well, that's make sure it doesn't smell like cheese. Yes. I love cheese. Those, that's important. You know, They're two very different foods, yes. right? <laughs> so Consumer Reports, wow, that's, in, that's a very impressive, some bragging rights there. What is it that you personally like about chocolate? Hmm. Um, the way it tastes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it's that, delicious. we agree, it, yeah. Know, it's just one of those things that makes you feel good, makes you feel happy, yeah. and that's so important about chocolate, uh, is that it makes you feel good and happy. Yeah, absolutely. And Talk to me a little bit about how you have sort of formulated this awesome set of recipes. Where did this come from? Is this all from you? Did you learn something along the way? I did learn a few things along the way, I like to believe anyway. Um, <laughs> no, they're all my recipes, uh, things that I either developed for um, previous uh, companies that I worked with, or for I should say, um, or you know, more recent developments that I've done uh, after I started Candinas. Okay, so kind of a collaboration of past knowledge and things that you've since learned after opening yeah. your shops. Yeah, it's just things I've done over the years. Um, it's not a democratic process as far as what chocolates we have in our box. That mm -hmm. At that point, it becomes just all about me, I guess. Yeah, it's all about <laughs> you. You're the, you're the man. You're the, ch the chocolate man. So um, talk to me about sort of why you came to Madison. You know, were you, were you, where were uh, you before and what brought you here? Well, I'm originally from Madison, so okay. it was um, kind of a relatively easy choice. I mean, there's a lot of places you could go, New York, L.A., Chicago, but, um, you know, I, I, I like the kind of more lighthearted approach that Madison has as opposed to the big city seriousness that maybe goes along with, you know, chocolatiers in those areas, so. Absolutely, and this is a great place, f one, f to sell food of any kind. We love our, our food People here. People do eat here, I've we noticed eat. that. We eat, yes, yeah. we like to eat, we like our cheese. We just had our cheese lady on, we like our chocolates. So, uh, what a great place to open a business, but we also like our locally owned businesses. So, uh, just a, a perfect location, and then you have a second store where is that one? We have two locations. One is Verona, that's where we make everything. Mm -hmm. And the second location is on the square, uh, 11 West Main. Okay. Downtown Madison. So you're downtown Madison, but you're actually, the magic happens in Verona. Yes. Okay. And the chocolate gets made there too. 
<laughs> and the chocolate. But um, bum. Yeah, where's our <laughs> laugh factory we need here? Oh, awesome. I'm not that funny. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it was good. Yeah. Well, excellent. Well, anything special that you have coming up that you want to talk about or well, holidays? Apparently, there's this thing called Sweetest Day. Really? That's what I'm told. It's going to happen this weekend. So I didn't know that. Sweetest day. Well, your boyfriend will probably remind you, or I you hope should so. remind him. Maybe is maybe. Yeah. Better. So what do you do on sweetest day? You buy, you buy chocolate. You buy chocolate. So it's this weekend. Yes. Okay. Well, now. But you I can know. buy it ahead of time. Like yeah. A day well, or two. And if there's a couple missing, we'll just blame it on the box. Yeah, the box came shorted. Sure. <laughs> All right, sweetest day this weekend. Well, Marcus, thank you very much for sharing some of your secrets to success with us. We'll have I to hope come I didn't out. Give any secrets? Well, just your successful okay. secrets, not your recipes. But we'll have to come out to, to Verona or down on the square to do some buying and tasting of our own. So thank you very much, Marcus Candinas of Candinas Chocolatier. We thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for having me. After the break, we're going to check in with our sports news partner to talk high school football. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. As promised, we're going to talk to Travis Wilson some more. We're going to pick his brain a little bit about week nine as far as Wisconsin's high school football is concerned. So we were able to catch up with Travis at some of the games over the last couple weeks. And Travis, in case you've missed it, is from Wisconsin Sports Network. So Travis Wilson, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So let's talk about week nine a little bit now. There was some, there was a lot going on. So what do you think is coming up that will be decided as far as conference championships this week? This is the last game we're covering. Yeah, last, so. last game of the regular season, and there's a lot on the line for a lot of teams. Still a lot of conference races up in the air. Uh, you take a look at the Big 8 Conference, league that we've talked about all season, uh, still undecided. Middleton plays Janesville Craig for the conference championship. Even though Craig lost last week, they can share the league title with a win over Middleton. Uh, you look at the uh, Badger South Conference, even though, again, Milton lost last week, they got a shot to get a share of the league title this week when they play Monona Grove, who's undefeated so far. So still a lot to be determined in a lot of these local conference races. Okay, good to know. And let's talk playoffs a little bit. We get to do that with you, or at least the last several weeks we've talked playoffs. What is it that makes football playoffs so unique? Well, it's unique in the respect that uh, football is the only sport where not every team actually gets into the playoffs. You have to earn your way into the playoffs, and you do that based on how you finish in your conference, your conference record. And uh, that really magnifies all of those conference games, and it really sets up a situation where it, it makes it more interesting and entertaining for us to follow as we go down to the regular season. Um, you know, this week is always kind of the, the pinnacle, the, the peak of interest in high school football as everybody's trying to figure out who's in, who's out, uh, you know, who they might end up playing, all that good stuff. So uh, that uh, really, again, makes it pretty exciting down the stretch here. Yeah, it's a big week for folks to sort of see who, what's going to shake out for some of those kind of on the cusp. And what area teams are on the postseason bubble? Well, if we start in the uh, Capital North, Lakeland, uh, excuse me, Lakeside Lutheran and Columbus both need to win to get in. If they lose, they're out. And they play each other in week nine. Oh, okay. So that's a, a really a play-in game, a, almost a de facto playoff game, sure. where the winner gets in and the loser's gonna stay home. Um, Baraboo is, uh, has a chance to get a win and get eligible for the playoffs. Now they've got a tall order in week nine, so unlikely they get it done, but they're one of those teams on the bubble. Uh, Madison Memorial could kind of sneak into the conversation with a victory. Uh, some other teams, East Troy, Palmyra Eagle, need to win to uh, to get qualified Wisconsin Dells as well, so a lot to be determined still. Okay, I'm excited. The, you know, the last week has to be fun like this, right? You got to yep. have some good matchups to make it challenging and, and fun for us to watch. Yeah. So um, you've done some projections on your site on wissports.net. Uh, talk to us about some of those. Give us some highlights. Well, uh, I, I picked every week nine game in the state, and, and based on that, came up with projections on uh, who would be into the playoffs, who wouldn't, etc. Uh, I came up with 223 teams that finished exactly 500 in their conference or better that would be in, and then also an independent team in Washburn who would get in. That means there would be, based on my projections, no teams that finish under 500 in their conference getting into the playoffs, which is different than what we've seen the last couple years. Last year there were seven sub-500 teams that got in. The year before that there was four. So going, uh, going a little bit against that grain based on my projections, but again, we'll 
see what the actual games bring on Friday and, and yeah. who does get in and who doesn't get in. See how it all shakes out, yeah. right? So what is the timeline as far as getting that playoff information? Well, Friday night, uh, all the games will get played, of course, and we'll get final scores posted on Wisports.net as soon as we can. And then I'll start uh, basically crunching numbers, figuring out who's in, who's out, um, put a uh, unofficial playoff field together. Usually sometime between 10.30 and 11 o'clock, I'll have an unofficial playoff field. And then the WIAA will release their official field sometime around midnight, maybe 12.30. So you can check Wisports.net and we'll have the information uh, usually an hour or two before the WIAA does. Um, we've always been right on with our, our projections. Uh, and then after that, about two o'clock in the morning, they'll release the regional groupings. Saturday, the seeding meetings will be held, and then the actual uh, games and matchups will be determined. Uh, determined. So, long story short, follow Wisports.net all weekend. Uh, we'll have you fully covered on all the playoff information. Love it. And we don't have a lot of time left, but I want to ask you really quick about state champions. Give us a prediction. D1, I'll take Kimberly if they end up in D1. D2, I'll take Germantown. Uh, Division three, uh, Greendale, D4, kind of up in the air, but I'll go local and take Broadhead Judah. In Division five, a uh, lot of good teams, but I'll take Lancaster once again, four years in a row that I picked them the last three years, they were runners up. Uh, in D6, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll take Athens in that one, I guess. In D7, um, I'll take Catholic Central. Okay. Travis Wilson, he's the man. Check him out on wisconsinsportsnet.net. And uh, we'll check in with them later. Don't worry, this isn't the last you'll see of Travis Wilson. We'll be back with more Talk of the Town right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're going to talk antiquing as it's becoming more and more popular thanks to shows like Flea Market Flip and American Pickers. We've got Carol Knight here who's going to talk to us a little bit more about antiquing. She's the owner of Maple Bluff Antique Mall. So welcome. Well, thank you. Very excited to, to have here. you. Yeah, we're cool. excited to have you. Not as excited as I am. It's a cool <laughs> it's a cool topic and becoming more and more popular. So talk to us a little bit about we'll talk about your specific business and sort of how you got involved first. Why did you move from Maple Bluff? Talk to us about that. Well, Maple Bluff was uh, the building was owned by developers and they had originally planned in two thousand seven to, or 2005 I think it was, to knock the building down and remodel, but then the recession took over and it sat empty. So I came along and said, can I put an put a antique mall in here? And they said, sure, but. So I never had a lease. I had to call every year and say, am I good for another year? And they would say, yes or no. Well, last year, 2013, they said, oh, maybe half a year. So we had to close uh, June 13th, uh, June 30th and move. And I didn't find a new place to move until a week before we closed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about stressful. Well, that sounds like a, a big job to completely relocate and on such short notice. So how did you, how did you it do that? It was a big job. It took us six weeks actually. Um, but I'm very, very lucky. I have the best antique dealers in the world. At the time we were still on Sherman Avenue, there were 20, 20 people left, 20 dealers left, and they all pitched in. Oh, nice. The only thing that we had moved professionally were the glass cases. Uh, otherwise, my dealers packed up all their stuff. They packed up all my stuff. They packed up all the store stuff. They hauled it from one place to the other. They unloaded it, they unpacked it, they put up the pegboard, they put up the grid wall, they put up the, the all of that stuff. The rest. Yeah, I can't <laughs> think of what it's called right now. Uh, wow. And got the place ready. That's, in that's intense, they, that's a lot of work. <clears throat> that was a lot of work, and yeah. I am very, very proud of that. Yeah. We even had customers who came in and pitched in and packed up. Wow. It was a group effort. It was a definite effort. So let's talk effort. about the new place now. You know, you're over on Stoughton Road in Madison. How are you liking that location? How's that working? Well, it's much bigger. And I now have 53 dealers in there. So there's a lot more people. But we still strive for that same kind of community feeling there. We have 
uh, dealer meetings, you know, like I try to say quarterly, but it doesn't always happen, where we get together and we have a potluck and everybody, everybody gets to know each other and we, uh, we vote on whether we're going to have a sale or what needs improving, that kind of thing. Uh, I call it a democracy with a dictator because I can override their decisions, but I never have. <laughs> um, it's a group effort, right? But the business has more than doubled. We're like two and a half times what we were doing over Great. on Sherman Avenue. So it turned out to be a good thing for you. It did. Now let's talk a little bit about trends. What kinds of things are popular right now in antique? And, you know, I hear that a lot. And if I knew the answer to that, I'd be a lot richer than I am. <laughs> um, there are certain things that, as the, the collecting cohort changes, you know, generations come and go. And my generation, for instance, is now downsizing and getting rid of all their stuff. And the younger generation is moving, moving into the collecting, and they don't collect the same things. Mm -hmm. They're more into the mid-century modern. I see that the 1970s stuff seems to be picking up. Um, and we like things, because I think some of, of some of these shows, we like to rework things, mm -hmm. too. So things mm -hmm. that we kind of can paint and make our own. This is true. Mm -hmm. I have found that people who come in and say, I want to use it. I just don't want to sit and look at it. Mm -hmm. And so that makes a big difference. Absolutely. So they're getting into the rustic stuff as well, because they don't feel so bad about slapping a coat of paint on it. Yeah. And... People think of antiques as expensive. Is this expensive merchandise? No. Okay. No. Nowhere. In fact, you can buy a, an antique or collectible. Most of the stuff in our store is actually collectible rather than truly antique. But you can buy a 50-year-old a dresser for much less than you can go buy a particle board dresser brand new. Yeah. Isn't that uh, something? And you get the quality. Yeah, and you get the quality, yeah. and this stuff you know is going to last because it's already lasted 50 years. Absolutely. Well, Carol... So, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I wish we had more time to chat, but um, I have a feeling you're going to get a visit from me very soon over there on Stoughton Road, Maple Bluff Antique Mall. Go check it out. Miss Carol Knight, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks to our guests, and thank you for watching. That's it for Talk of the Town. Please join us next time.